Hello, everybody. Welcome back to episode 14 of MC Events Podcast. I got that wrong last week. We're up to 14. As always, I'm your host, Joey Capallo, joined by Gillen. Hello. And today we're going to be watching what just happened over the weekend, which is Chiller's Championship. We're watching from Theo Speller, Speller's point of view, who is on the blue team, Anano- Ananox. I don't know how to pronounce that. We might find out as we watch. Um, but yeah, we're going to watch through. It's about an hour long. We're going to give our thoughts and review of the event. As always, this is just meant to be a learning tool. If you're working on your own event or want to use, you know, have insight or get feedback for the people making it, uh, they don't have to follow it though, but we just wanted to, you know, give it a watch and see how it is. Mm-hmm. Gillian, are you ready to get started? Yep. All right. Hit go in three, two, one, go. I know they got my bag. I know they got my bag. They're a real one. They're a real one. Yeah. Yes. You didn't get that? They won. We get a little bit of them in the lobby before they pop into the voting area. As mm-hmm. as well, there are six teams in this with four players on each team, so that equals 24 players. It's your typical eight-game style of event, where between each game, they'll go in and vote on what game they want to play. Any initial impressions from now going to the voting arena, Gillen? Um, I mean, I think we've talked about so much. Every event at this point has it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you got your little wheel of fortune looking thing, and everyone chooses a side, or you throw chickens or something. You do something, uh, but you know it works. Mm-hmm. It works. It does what it does. It has its benefits. It has its downsides. Uh, but we start off with the first game called Pillar Problems, which I only briefly looked through these as I was editing it down, but this first one is a PvP style game, and it explains it in the chat here, we will see. And as well, the um, other thing to point out, just since we're watching from the Theo's POV here, is that he's using Lunar, so there's all these extra things on the screen, the uh, very top compass, top left coordinates, these other stuff. So that's like the n- that's not things put there by the event. That's just from Lunar. Even the potion or effects at the side saying night vision saturation, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this game is PP uh, game team based, where teams are essentially in this little space i guess you call it. this little little arena that's not very big but as the time goes on the floor will start decaying so the bottom up toward the top and so they have to quickly you know start going up uh they're able to break break blocks and place blocks of course and their blue concrete gets replaced every I think it, it gives it refills every 30 seconds or whatever that timer is, 20 seconds. So you can't just immediately pull it all to the top and it forces you kind of take it slower. And one of their teammates already drifted away from where the rest of them are. What's your immediate reaction to this game, Gillen? Um, I, I do like the fact that like a lot of these games you have a map and the map, that that's what the map is. It doesn't change. It might decay, it might break over time. But I do like when people take advantage of this. And I, I think I mentioned this before in game design. Like Minecraft is a sandbox. So allowing players to place and play, uh, bleh, place and break blocks is like the strong the strongest part of Minecraft. Like that's the mm-hmm. kind of the best part. That's why it exists. That's why the game was originally made. Back in alpha of Minecraft, it really was just a block placing game. That's all it was. There was there wasn't really much gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think allowing players to place and break blocks and change the map over time is a big advantage. And it's why we see things like bridging is a very unique thing to Minecraft. I mean, I guess mm-hmm. you can make arguments that other games like Fortnite have building mechanics, but the idea of like bridging and towering up um, and also the fact that like, oh, if you're in a kind of situation on the map where you don't feel as safe, you can either place blocks or break some blocks to kind of like build build yourself a an area that helps you fight in a certain mm-hmm. situation it makes it much more interesting i also like what they've done here of having blocks you know, given more blocks every so often so you can't just pillar immediately to the top or can't mm-hmm. just use your blocks only defensively and just place down as many as you can to keep you safe you're forced to kind of conserve and decide when mm-hmm. to go up versus when to you know go laterally um yeah it's one of those things where we see a lot like the idea is when you give people blocks the big worry is sky basing like mm-hmm. that that concept you see it in a lot of uh uh hunger games type style like uh survival games type style games where people just at the end all just 
if you allow them to build, they're just all going to hole up in a, in the sky. But having mechanics where, you know, there's limited number of blocks or, you know, blocks decay over time or something like that, it actually makes sure that, you know, players can't just be defensive all the time. They have to eventually go out and fight. And it appears they've hit the height border of where they could place blocks here now that the like, top mm -hmm. level to fight. Which I think is good then, because you obviously you said you can't make those sky basings. Uh, also, some of their items they're using that aren't like the weapons are power up items. Mm -hmm. I, I don't exactly know because uh, it was said in the the intro of what they did, but I think some of them have like additional knockback or apply effects to the person. Yeah, no, uh, because the string I think has speed. Mm -hmm. or, because if you notice, that. they didn't have any swords or axes. Like the only mm -hmm. real way to get kills was push people off the side. Which is then an interesting way to make this game where you have a limited number of blocks. Because if you had a full number of blocks, it'd be so easy to stay alive. You would never get killed. You just box yourself in. But instead, they're forced to go all the way up to this top platform. So they don't have blocks and kind of fight it out. Well, I also find it interesting is they have an axe. They do oh, have they an do axe. axe. <laughs> but I don't think it allows them to hit with it. I think it actually it might block it because none of them were using it. I don't use it. Maybe it does. I don't know what the axe it, would be for it them might, because I didn't it might see also, wood. I think there is wood in the map some mm -hmm. places. Uh, so I think it's the idea is you can break some parts of the map, like those planks there. Mm -hmm. um, it either blocks them from using it, or there's a thing you can do with... Um, you can change the actual damage amount mm -hmm. of the weapon. So it might just have like a zero damage amount, or it might be equivalent to a fist. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't I haven't I, seen I the MBT tell. data. But the fact that none of them are using it makes me think that there is something... There's a reason they're not using it. They're not just doing that because they're uh, It's like the, the fishing rod only has one use. Yeah. Probably. So it, it it's good for camping... To, or to prevent camping where mm -hmm. people just sit and start fishing people up i think right. probably like a two use fishing rod would be a yeah. little better though mm -hmm. um because that one chance to make it happen feels a little bad when you don't the other thing i'm noticing we're gonna cut ahead here because that we get three rounds of this and they're very long uh is the final fight feels very awkward at times as there's mm -hmm. like a area here where they can't get pushed out of really so that needs a slight redesign on the map so it's not as easy to just hide in that space mm -hmm. and i was gonna say as well when you're pillaring up it the map feels doesn't feel vertically different like mm -hmm. there's no real change in the outside of it of that big wall that kind of keeps them in, contained that i think if that like showed some progression would help you feel you know you're climbing you're closer to the top or can tell you like oh we're this high above this other team and said it kind of all just felt the same and you're kind of just going up forever but i liked it it was good iterative design on a uh pvp game that's not just sword or axe combos and such or even those mm -hmm. uh but as i said there are three rounds that we skip through a fair amount of gameplay because this is about a two an hour and a little event and pretty much most of it is gameplay which is a very good thing, but we can't watch it all because that's a long time. I'm forcing them to think differently um, oh. and play in a different way. I, I lost from Gillen of what you said, forcing players to think differently. What would you say before that? Uh, so a lot of times it's actually a good idea to not just give players the basic stuff, like not just give them, here's your sword, here's your axe, here's some armor. If you give them something slightly different, you know, kits as we're seeing right now on screen like that that works in a lot of games but sometimes just saying hey here's some random items that do these things figure it out that can be much more fun mm -hmm. um i mean i know that uh i believe on pvp legacy sometimes people run lobbies where your inventory is just full of like random items that do all these different things and it's like forcing people to fight in dip with using mechanics that are less you know more unusual in minecraft like forcing people yeah. to use hay blocks to clutch or you know forcing people to do you know those kinds of things mm -hmm. and i think it, it results in an interesting game that people find more fun mm -hmm. and then moving on to this game which i said the title and then forgot the title uh, another pvp game where they get to pick four kits so each of the team has a kit and they get points through kills and they get points through uh, mining coal Mm -hmm. which is a weird way to do it but essentially the teams are in these little spaces and they get 30 seconds to kind of like build slash prepare for the fight uh and then in the same way like mini walls the walls come down and all of a sudden they're now fighting yep uh there's uh the gold ones here 
uh, I forget the other way. Like you have to literally mine to get blocks at all because they have no blocks to start. And so here Theo is just breaking the stone and uh, then realize, wait, it's much faster to break the stuff on the ground. So grabs the shovel to get blocks. Uh, and then we're going to see them go at it against the other teams. I, I'm pretty sure they're all in. Yeah, they're all in at the same time. It's all the same map. They're just uh, facing different sides. And as mm -hmm. well, you get points there for mining the gold that's between each team. So that's what they're trying to fight over. I think when you die, you are dead for the whole We'll find out in a moment when they kill mm -hmm. somebody. This is an event, while I'm like, I've been familiar with it for a while, I haven't watched it in full since a long while ago, and they've changed a lot since then. Yeah. Um, I believe this game, I forgot, there was a public server that at one point had a game very similar to this, because it's not, I mean, like, you can compare it to something like Mini Walls. Mm -hmm on um a high pixel but i think there was another one that it reminds me of a bit more of i forgot what server had it I, maybe it was a mindplex game which is probably why i don't remember it because nobody really plays on my <laughs> i like the way the map's decaying though right there of changing mm -hmm. to glass and so telling you this is the danger zone moving in and i remember last video we were talking about consistency and the idea of like even across games it's a good mm -hmm. idea to keep certain things consistent and that red glass also showed up in yes. the last game it was a similar decaying method um and that that's also a a great thing that like now immediately as soon as you see that red glass you're like oh i know that's decaying mm -hmm. you know you always know that no matter what game you're in um the, the issue I have with this game, I guess it's not an issue, it could be also intentional in game designer, which is it's three rounds, similar thing. But after all those resources were initially collected, uh, there's this middle part that uncovers, but it just feels like another like survival games-esque like middle finale fight happening. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like there almost needs to be either more of the ores to fight over um, or some way to make like to force teams to fight. We've talked about this so many times, the, the similar concept. Mm -hmm. And so like, I like the deep slate times. I like those not unlocking till later, but now it's just fight. It's just fight and kind of force people yeah, into another team, and then you can clean up. Um, and I like that there's all the lava because it makes it more dangerous, easier to potentially kill people. But again, you're still having the struggle of people don't want to fight until they have to. Yep. Um, so I, if I had any recommendations for like changes, it'd be just some more ores to mine that are like not necessarily middle middle, but they're in the da the corners of the middle. So then you're f having people fight in the middle like earlier. Or as well, you could even uh, speed up the round a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that when that deep slate, um, those deep slate diamonds are finally unlocked, then there's only like 40 sec 45 seconds left in the game versus however much time is currently left when they're unlocked. And that also speeds up the outer decay, so just forces teams in sooner. Because also this is a... 24 player, 24 player event, which Bill and you and I are used to thinking about 40 players or even 32. And so 24, mm -hmm. it's then harder to conceptualize, you know, how fast it can go. And there, Theo has realized the strategy of mining dirt and mm -hmm. uh, gravel as it's faster than digging or using a pickaxe, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. I wish that I also think it'd be cool if there was some strategy of like defending your teams something uh-huh like if yeah it feels like you could like build defenses but why would you mm -hmm. yeah it's the kind of thing is it's the reason why like mini walls has the wither kind mm -hmm. of situation where it it means that you can't just go out charging and hiding in an area your team's wither is going to be taken out and you, you can do that and then you have one life left you know that's kind of the, yeah. the trade-off here i like the um but if they were to do that, maybe they'd try to go a different route of trying to figure out what's another way to make sure players can't just go to the best place to protect and then just sit there. Mm -hmm. Which I think the resources do kind of do. It kind of forces uh, players to fight over stuff. You can see that both teams kind of just trade resources. Like, and I'll now we half, have like two and a half minutes of our minute and a half of waiting until the middle to unlock and then they all fight uh -huh. again. I think what yeah. could work is the potential of like uh, at... I don't know, 215 in your own base, it unlocks some more gems, but you're not able to mine it. 
so you can mine other teams but not your own is one potential or you could mine your own so that way you could force a team out take theirs and also secure mining your own but that way there's a reason to kind of like play defensive there but also to play aggressive if you want to take the other because the issue could be if you're like oh you can mine your own then every team just sits in their base waits to mine it and now like all right we'll push forward but if you couldn't mine your own now there's a reason to, you know, kind of fight for others and uh, go on the offensive. But then again, why would you play defensive? Then everybody just make a circle and go around to the other one. Maybe in some way you can, other people can uh, mine it fast sooner, but you, can mine, you can't mine your own until like slightly later in some way. Mm -hmm. Something like that could work. I'm not saying that, again, uh, we respect all the people at Chillers and what they make. We're not saying they have to make any of these changes. We're just offering some recommendations of things we notice. These can always be intentional ga game de game design decisions they've made. They are perfectly acceptable to do it that way too. But it's just me. No it's, my notice is that this game feels very long because there's about a minute and a half of nothing. Uh, no reason to fight until you're pushed all the way in. And then just my issue with that is my issue with survival games in general or hunger games in general either. Is that it just doesn't it feels like a chaotic mess oh, that guy's low. rather than like getting the chance to really pvp other people anything you have to say about it gillen um i think one thing i do like um that does prevent this game from having like that survival games problem we had where some people some teams just end up getting really good resources and steamrolling mm -hmm. others um is the fact that i don't think I mean, even when they mine some of those resources, it didn't really boost just gives, them that It just much. gives you points, yeah. Yeah, you don't actually... It's not like you get the... Oh, whoops. Uh, it's not like you take those middle uh, diamonds and then now your team is just going to win because you have diamond armor or something. It, it, it actually is a bit more balanced. Than that. Yeah, because I mean, I do like that. the diamonds were 12 points and a kill is worth 20. And there are only four diamonds in the center. So it's worth two kills in a little. If I did my math right. Mm -hmm. And if there wasn't actually five, then I did my math wrong. It's fine. But we'll pretend I didn't. I did do it correctly. Um, so it seems the case it was balanced well points wise to make it like it's good to get these things, but also if you're just really good at um, PvP, you'll end up with a lot of points as well. And this one, Gillen, hey, it's your classic battle box extraction capture points all the other you know iterative round games of facing every mm -hmm. other team uh but at this time you're protecting the cheese who goes after me incredible name of course mm -hmm. i'm gonna go up of course uh i th i th i think we only watch round one nine and ten uh because these are a minute and a half rounds and they did 10 rounds so you face every team twice rather than just once mm -hmm. Uh, my first thought about this is I really like the map. Okay, whatever. Um, I like that it feels kind of like you're in the ends, but it also feels like space at the same time. Uh, I think a, uh, I think that just gives it a very nice aesthetic and feel to it. I think I do think that the gray uh, glass you can stand on does feel un unobvious. Um, but it does enhance the fact that you're on a floating island, so I can understand why to keep it as well. Uh, but this is a game similar to similar to the others we talked about in the past that are like this. You're forcing two teams to fight each other, right? And they're trying to position how to fight. In this case, each team plays as attacker and defender. So one team defends their cheese while the other team comes in to crack it, as they put. And at least I think that's a I don't want to say a better iteration, but a, a new iteration on doing it to force teams to actually have to fight. Because mm -hmm. that means one of the teams ha like has to be on the attack, or they're going to get very few points for the round. Um, whereas in other games like Battlebox, if both teams are passive, they're they both get no points, but they also both don't get points. Uh, they, which I said the same thing twice, but you understood what I meant. Mm -hmm. Or... Um, or if the, you know one team's playing passive, the other team can't just get all the points by, you know, just running to the middle and capturing the wool or something. Like this forces one team to have to be aggressive and one team have to be uh, more defensive. But it does kind of feel like it has the same flaws as a lot of games like this. 
which is the map is kind of uh, difficult to navigate and then attack people on. Mm -hmm. I also am not great at telling when they're when the blue team's on the attack or the defense because it seems like they both are. Maybe I'm also misunderstanding the game and they're both teams are on attack and defense, but it seemed like it was not. Or wait. Oh my god. Re replay what we all just said. The reason it said Cracker one is because the team Aqua is called Cracker. So uh, I, miss I misspoke about all of that stuff. Ignore what I said. Let's try that again. This is just team team v team. Whichever team dies, the other team wins. Mm -hmm. There's a, It's not the idea that there is a attacking versus defending team. It's the idea of just go kill the other team or go break all of their tree cheese and you win the round. Mm -hmm. Apologies for misexplaining it. Uh, and I, I do like... It, it has that kind... Yeah, it has that... It, it almost The cheese is like almost a safety. I think a lot most of these rounds we've just kind of seen one team take out the other one. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it acts as kind of a safety as like, just in case some team is playing super defensive or not really doing anything, um, the other team is able to do that, which is kind of like what, you know, if you look at something like battle box, that's kind of what the wool really is. Yeah. Most of the time the team who fills out the wool, like they're just the one who killed all the other, mm -hmm. uh, who took out the, the whole other team. Um, but sometimes like the idea of wool rushing of just taking it out early is a strategy. Um, is a strategy or is a backup if you're not able to take out the other team. If you can end up killing like the last person, you can just fill mm -hmm. it in as time expires. Yeah. Yeah, what I'm noticing for this game as well, since the time is a minute 30, they got their uh, cheese broken there really quickly, mm -hmm. is that it, the rounds feel too long for how quick they're taking. Mm -hmm. Like each round we've seen so far, I skipped. we skipped ahead to round nine here, so we watched one, two, and five, and now nine. Um, is that they're finishing in about 30 seconds, but there's still a whole minute to go. And either that's just, you know, unbalanced in the sense that one team is just much stronger than the other, or it's just the sense that it's really easy to kill the other team quickly. Yeah. And so I'm not, I don't necessarily think the rounds need to be shortened or lengthened. I don't think that can, matters that much, but it just seems like a case of the round timer not really being a timer and more just a backup in case no one no one is uh, actually pushing to win a round mm -hmm. and and sometimes it might be a better idea to actually use the timer as part of the game and p force people to have a time limit because mm -hmm. it does make it so players fight faster and they don't wait around as long mm -hmm. if they actually feel like they could risk you know not getting any points um because that pushes people to fight the other thing I'm noticing, I can't tell how many, I think they, they had a limited number of arrows, so now they're out, and they're forced to just go into sort of PP compound, mm -hmm. which kind of plays like uh, old extraction in Block Wars did, where you'd fight, 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 and then it's like, all right, we're go you shoot, 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 and then you go, all right, we're going in to fight, and that's how you have to do it. It feels like, you know, some other addition could be made in terms of either like potions, or... Uh, other special items that could add a little more nuance and variance to mm -hmm. how a round plays. Like imagine one person teams Ender Pearl, all of a sudden you have to play defense a little harder uh, because that person Ender Pearl and then knock out your cheese. But again, not saying it has to be done that way. But if you're trying to avoid the PvP sword mosh pitting, it'd be a case that you mm -hmm. likely want to add some more variance in the items that can be used. And going into the next game, it's parkour. I just want to highlight again uh, something we've talked about in previous uh, reviews, which is like the game tutorials of explaining how it is. Theo here is part of the staff team of Chillers, I believe. He's at least followed by the account, mm -hmm. from what I can see. And there's only four people followed. And so it's a case of then, obviously, he knows the games really well. But if you're somebody tuning in to watch, it can also be hard to do it. And again, this is not telling Chillers to do this because this is just a friends event not meant to be better that we keep it very contained and for the people it is but it's just sometimes hard if you're trying to now watch to be like i don't quite understand how this game plays and if i was watching the tutorial or watching trying to read the chat for the tutorial you're not gonna you could miss it and not understand exactly what happens mm -hmm. and now we're on to parkour which is um and there's a compa there's a server that had parkour like this that i cannot remember um 
that I played on a few times. It's kind of like Hypixel housing in the sense that you know, mm -hmm. there's stages and levels, but this is more like so a circle. So it's like, uh, it's the kind of parkour that is like TikTok stories are usually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I swear I saw this on a, a server I played on for a bit. And there's also the idea of these harder routes to go that are marked with red that are then faster mm -hmm. if you can do it, which I like that because they kind of add separation. My only thing that I've really noticed okay. when I watched it briefly is it feels like the outside of the map is almost too decorated. Mm -hmm. um, and that I like, sometimes struggle to see. And his Theo's teammates say it as well. They struggle to know where to go um, because it it's hard to tell. Yeah. There's lots of... I think yeah, go ahead. One thing to point out is the idea that there's actually multiple ways to solve that. And one of them is to, you know, make the outside of the map less decorated. The other one is to make it so the parkour itself actually looks very different from mm -hmm. the rest of the map. And that's actually a thing that a really good example. If you look at um, MCC parkour tag, a lot of maps, if you actually look at like the types of blocks they use for the the area you're really supposed to do the parkour on, it's frequently like different colors. Like it'll be mm -hmm. like a bright red or like uh, it, it'll stand out. And when you're running around panicked while someone's chasing you a lot of times that you'll end up going those routes it's kind of like supposed mm -hmm. to show that um so like having something like that where you know they kind of do it with a carpet but also making it so like the parkour itself just has a different uses different blocks than the uh mm -hmm. decoration um can make sure that players aren't confused about where they're supposed to go yeah and there's also as it's showing in chat there's the easy course medium and hard and theo's already to the hard he, i believe he finishes very high as as he's already done uh we could have watched more of it but it's just parkour and it keeps i mean we saw we we know how it's gonna look so it seems to me like the only thing that really could potentially need adjustments is just making the readability of where to go easier and that could also be done with a slight like they're not using a texture pack but I think like a really slight one that just changes from those arrow blocks to something a little more easy to like see and visualize what's where it's pointing you would be really helpful. Yeah. And then or just having the blocks themselves like sure the backgrounds of the um, each level could be like a certain theme, but then the blocks themselves could be a separate theme within that level. Mm -hmm. And so the blocks and room could stay separate themes, so then it's always easy to tell what's going on. Uh, this game is called Mayhem, but it's a bunch of actually different mini games at once, in the same way Block Wars has Party or Pandora's Box has Gauntlet or Gauntlet 2. And in the first version, the first game of it, micro game, if you will, it's Cheese Hunt, and they're trying to collect as much cheese as possible by finding it around the map. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like find the button in a sense. But a little less annoying. A little easier to do. Again, this is something where I think like a slight texture pack could help with the cheese block. Because I think that is, unless it's yellow terracotta, which it might be, um, it doesn't stand out the most against some of the things. And I, I mean, it also could be done that way so it doesn't stand out too much. But I think having it um, be a custom block would be a little Maybe easier. Maybe a bit more Swiss cheese like little holes yeah, yeah. in it or something. Or texture would make it a little add a little bit to your collecting cheese or or a custom model where it's like a little triangle <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> um but i wanted to highlight this while we're in this game and micro game moves the next one like this style of game of having micro games within one game uh what are your thoughts on it gillen because it forces players to have to learn a lot of games really quickly. Um, but it can also be a ways of trying, like using one concept for a game without having to, like, it doesn't flesh out to a full game. Yeah, I think I like it as, like, a, as a person who has to make these games. I do like the idea of that because it means you can just make more smaller ideas. You don't have to, like, fully, you know, to fully think out a whole system and get it out. You can just kind of have fun with it. Um, but I also understand that to a certain point it might seem a little silly where it's like you've already made an event with a bunch of games and you added in a game that's a bunch of games and you have like kind of a Russian doll like situation yeah, where they're games games. Each other. game of the games and then like maybe one of the games has their own mini games inside the game like yeah it's a bit chaotic mm -hmm. um, but I, I do like the idea that you know you have these games you play or you play a lot you play multiple rounds of the same thing and maybe it's fun to have a break and just mess around a bit what? um and I, I i do like that and i think that it does work because a lot of these games probably couldn't be like no one wants to play 
10 minutes of cheese hunt. <laughs> Let's collect the cheese. Yeah, it's way too yeah. long. And this one is battle like played happened. the same way as Block Wars Battle, battle which is not a bad thing. It's just in the sense yeah. that teams are pushed to the center fight in PvP. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has to be really quick. But it seems like it's almost like too fast because this game has eight micro games. And I think they last a total of like 20 minutes, which is much longer than any of the other games, which is okay. You don't have to have them all be the same length. But it does feel like a very long then um now this, this is the light game, game, this is game the compared game to the other ones yeah, I just had a light. That's good. so That's I, I think there could be potential to move it down to six or as we're going to see all of them um here we can you know give our thoughts on which ones seem the most fun or most should stay mm -hmm. um but if i had to say that the battle game looks like had the classic issues of a final survival games which is teams kind of what the um, fuck is going not on? targeted, but team like you just get teamed up and killed from the side, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. There wasn't a whole lot of ways to hide or get away, and the border mm -hmm. came in so quickly that you're kind of forced into those interactions. What is even going I do on? like sumo. It's a fun, it's a fun game. It's a fun, quick micro game as well. Uh, the only thing I'm no, noticing, no, which no, I assume no, the map no, is the game yet, is is that you <laughs> stay on the outside seems like the safer place to be. Mm -hmm. I noticed that I tried to go until you're forced yeah. to come in. It almost seems like there should be more holes. <laughs> oh, Just to make people a bit oh, yeah, more angry. <laughs> we'll see how, how quickly... It, it doesn't look like it's... No, it's king a little more. It's hard to tell from this upwards angle. Well, I do like the fact that it is not just a circle, like a not basic mm -hmm. circle of a map, the, the little areas. It makes players think about where they're standing. It's not just, oh, am I close to an edge? It's like, which edge am I close to? Mm -hmm. A lot of times if they're getting punched earlier in the game, they could just kind of like jump back to another area. Mm -hmm. It looks like the, the timer did run out as well. And it for like mm -hmm. teams still have to fight whoever who lives. Mm -hmm. Which I like is a little deathmatch finale. Like the timer then is just telling you this is when the border stops closing again. Now fight mm -hmm. to the death. Uh, yeah, because it was one of those games that it's just going to end. It has doesn't to. matter. It's going to end. Um, as well, this is now a block placing game, not a building game, as we know, villain. Um, mm -hmm. And to replicate the build real quick, you only do one build and then you move on. It's not I find it funny that this is a two minute game, whereas the uh, sumo was a one minute game. So I'm not saying, and it looks like they also have extra blocks, which is interesting. So then you can uh, place down more than you need, but it also caused issues mm -hmm. of struggling. Um, but my point being that it feels weird for Sumo to be that one minute game where now we're here for a two minutes, but these two minutes go by really quickly anyway, so mm -hmm. probably okay. And I, I think the advantage of a lot of these games is that some of them, as I said, with the, the collect the cheese kind of game where it's just, you can't play a, that game for a really long time and it'll still be fun. This is kind of also in that same camp where it's like, for games like this, sometimes it might just be better to you know say yeah let's just play like one one build do yeah. one build and then move on um and you still get to experience it and you get to experience a bunch of these little fun games but you don't have to like put 10 minutes into it mm -hmm. uh, i don't know what the strat would be here but it does feel like in some way it'd be easier if uh players just grabbed more of the blocks at once out there trying to speed bridge to finish Yo, placing the uh, the wall. We did. And now they're struggling yeah. to see what they did wrong. Oh my god, the mm -hmm. fucking fence post which fell. I, I can't tell, which I normally I can. No fucking oh, they placed no. the flag one too low. There's no reason I hate this game actually. Here, here. Where the fuck did all the fence I can't go? tell, and that looks like a really Anyone hard thing to see. tell because you can't jump mm -hmm. up on the other side. Well, the, yeah, well, there's the there's uh, ladders. It looks like you might be able to, but it it's very hard to just guess well, and tell. Mm -hmm. So my only my only recommendation of this is just have it be a little easier to tell if there's vertical dimension. Like if you had had the fences be two of them, like birch or oak or something, or two of them be nether and then there four, like three uh, oak there, it'd be easier than to count it real quick and know how many you're doing. Yeah. Um, this one is a kind of similar obstacles in the sense you have to you know bridge and move. Uh, the thing that you're probably going to 
you're probably going to say it, that I'm also going to say Gillen is just oh, looking God. at it. It's very I hard. I can't tell where things you are. You can't tell. The depth perception is off because everything mm -hmm. is the same color. Okay, I'm with it. And so. Yeah, it's like a green screen type thing. I think either like some level of gradient would help of just the green or having mm -hmm. um, the diff. The, the different sections be slightly different colors to tell what's going on. What the heck? But as well, this is a very fast well, there's a thing game, there. oh, I didn't see micro it. game, so I don't know if it's the, mm -hmm. the biggest deal. Oh, and this, oh, I have, I saw way back in the day. No. Or no, yeah, where you get points every time you go through, you score. Mm -hmm. So it's in your best interest to make an actual bri bridge to get back. And then mm -hmm. be able to have it be one to keep oh using. God. Oh, I don't like that. The teal blends with the wall there because yeah, the it might the want to have a different color that doesn't match with the team. Oh, mm -hmm. I also have the hiccups. Apologies for that. But it's interesting to watch then what paths people are trying to follow when they don't like. They only went. They only went on his first pass, so he can't tell where he's going, where people went last time. Excuse me. Uh, I also can't really tell how, how well points are scored throughout these micro games, which is another mm -hmm. um, the common oh issue God, with them, kill your mother, SMK which has oh, been said other. many times. Don't it's don't like care. you can't yeah, tell yeah. how well your team did yeah. in mm -hmm. the enti yeah, I mean. entire game because it oh, feels very... It, there's so many to try to keep track of. <laughs> oh, I was going I to get like first in the beginning, but I just did not see one of the things. Which isn't know. necessarily a bad thing, but it's just a case of, like, if you're really worried about points, um, the style of, like, micro games within a game are very hard to deal with. And then we move on to Spleef. Classic. I do like the arena. It looks pretty, pretty nice. And it's immediately Spleef, regular Spleef, and then the layer below is TNT Spleef. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a good like way to, uh, you know, incentive like change up the change up a bit. I do think though that because the first layer is removed so quickly, there's really no point in having it that much. Because mm -hmm. um, people fell down because like didn't really matter if they fell down, and they because they knew the top layer is gonna be removed anyway, Boom. like really quickly. Yeah. So I think either... I also like that even though it's uh, TNT Spleef, you can still just break stuff with the shovel. Yeah, <laughs> that's really the best kind of way fun. to do it. So either I think there should be some way of like making the top player decay inwards really quickly, or some reason that players are going to want to fight up there. All, as well, this doesn't matter that much because it is one of the micro games. Oh, that, <laughs> that knockback stick doing work. I need to channel my in the underscore loop. Um, and it's one of the micro games, and so it doesn't matter that much of how it plays. But just something I noticed if like that top layer doesn't feel very uh necessary. Because nothing really changes from it. Yeah. And then Theo, I think, comes in like I'm gonna spoil it. Theo comes in second overall in the event, so clearly he's playing very well. And we get to see that throughout some of these games. As chat blows up for him too. Mm -hmm. And then is there one? Yeah, we're still up. Assassin, more man. These hiccups are gonna have to be edited out, which will be very fun. Um, it's another PVP survival esque ga game mm -hmm. where you're having to, you know, kill everyone else, stay alive. Um, the other thing I'm noticing is that. Players in chat are asking what game this is in Mayhem, and so it seems like that'd be something nice to to have to be able to know while you're watching or while you're playing, of knowing how many games you have still left. Um, I think the the best example I give is currently Block Wars is um, Move, a little boss bar at the top that says which four the four games being four micro games being played in what order they're being played in, and telling you which one you're on then. Yeah. Okay, I see red over there. Red super. Uh, and as well, this is, I mean, it's another fight to the death, fight tool. You get put, pushed toward the center, center PvP game. I think this event does, I think Chillers has a lot of this, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I think it does seem like it comes across kind of repetitively. Uh, players might disagree, but just from watching it at least, or reading it in this way, it feels like we're doing the same game very often. Mm -hmm. I got away. 
Right. Yeah, and I guess that, that's probably part of the thing you mentioned that because there's that it, this, it actually ends up being one of the longest games, like mm -hmm. in, in total. It it might just be a good idea to remove repeat like similar games and yeah. shorten it if possible. Likely. Oh the board are not doing much. Ender Pearl in, and then fight to the death in the center, as we all know how it goes. Mm -hmm. I think my issue just with this is more of a greater issue with P in Minecraft PvP is so often you run into a player from behind and you crit them out before they can even react or do anything. Yeah. And it doesn't really feel fun to e either when you're killing them or dying to them. Like you don't feel like that duel that you can kind of sometimes get on PvP mm -hmm. Legacy in the sense of like you're really fighting off. I mean, I guess you could say that, well, it just takes, like, awareness and skill, but a lot of times in a mosh pit like that, at the end, there isn't really You can't, like, you're, you're be forced between one team or the other, like, oh, running yeah. toward them. You can't really not... Okay. Should, wait, Goodness, you can't really not get hit by one of them. And then this game, Sky Blockle, similar to the MCC version long ago, um, you start in your floating Sky Block Islands, you collect some resources, you move toward the middle and fight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say the same... Thing I just said it plays very yeah, similar to the other the get pushed toward the middle PvP games. Yeah. I mean, yes, it obviously is different. You have to like get blocks, you have to, you know, craft things, you have to gear up. Um but it just means that the actual like PvP you're doing, the actual fighting you're doing is the same essentially every time. Okay, wait, get the wood. I also don't know how I feel. I, I haven't decided how I feel about games where you have to craft your own armor. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're just adding a step that every team's going to do. So why not just have everyone start with that armor then? Um, so then remove that extra step of necessity. Remove the extra little grind you have to do. Because I guess it does um, reward the players for very fast at crafting. But that then doesn't that doesn't feel like something anyone really wants to practice except speedrunners. Yeah. So in my opinion, like if, if you're like expecting players to all make gold pants at the spawn, we'll just give them gold pants. If you're like, well, we still want the players to have to do something at spawn, like one player is collecting blocks, one player started bridging, one player is doing something else, then have something else that they can grab. Like they have to pillar up to get it i think is yeah, good because it wastes us, both time it spends time getting blocks and then going up uh, but just something else because everyone's already gonna make this armor unless does look like a team got iron armor as well i don't know where they got iron blocks from because i did not see them but i think they're on the the secondary islands teams can fight over mm -hmm. uh, but as well this is going to have all the things we just talked about about pvp games being forced to a mosh pit in the middle which is you get you get either uh, cro not cross teams because uh, you get third party that's the word for it or you just get hit in the back and there's not a whole lot you can do about it uh this also is the first map i've noticed that has kind of a verticality to it that it seems to be very exploitable and and uh Theo asking in chat, where was the diamond stuff? Because he is unaware. I'm guessing it was at the set center. Yep, block it middle to then make stuff. Which makes sense. If you get to middle first, you get a reward for getting there. Which is fine. Makes, 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 makes sense. That's usually how it goes. <laughs> Anything else you're noticing? I think we might have one micro game left. Um, I think in general it's just like, nope. yeah, it's an example of the same thing we've seen in a lot of other events, events before. Similar style game, just to have more smaller level, smaller level one round. I, I was, I lied about that. We actually, that was the last mech game and I skipped directly ahead of the next game, which I forget the name of now. That's the other thing I'd like is be able to see the names while you're in each game because it'll force players to remem remember it more often as well. Uh, but this game is kind of like... So I don't know, complete eight challenges as a team. Each of the there's eight islands around them, they get points for collecting the final block that the island gives. 
and it mm -hmm. each island says how many players are needed okay. here. Okay, two players on each so in this case, uh, there's like team parkour that needs to be done, where one person has to unlock the way the other person is going. Two players need to be on both pressure plates at the end. Um, okay, we need two players on the. I like. I I'm gonna say some. You know, it's probably gonna be a weird take for me, but I actually like the signs being used to explain rather than like a book or a lectern or something, because it's the fastest way to convey information okay, wait, nitro, nitro, but i could nitro, also nitro, like the idea nitro, of nitro, not nitro, having nitro, that okay, okay. I need to mm -hmm. I need and just having them be like how oh, wait, wait, how wait, do we make wait, them wait, as understandable wait, as possible wait, without giving wait, wait, extra information and the same way like grid runners uh, does mine. in mcc mm -hmm. and you still have to do some decently difficult parkour and then you get the wool um so it's Kind of in the sense of grid runners, where you know you have all these different challenges you complete as a team, but you instead can do that in any order you want. Which I do like that idea because you can kind of be like, oh shoot, we don't know how to do this one. Let's go back and go to a different one. Um, but I think the issue it also then has is like a team could get really rewarded for accidentally going in like the right order in a sense. Mm -hmm. Or they can get hurt by going in the wrong, yeah, <laughs> in a bad order. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, you can you can technically argue that every game, if you have to do every game, you end up doing all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if you if you have a if you start with a one, then you don't really understand the concept of the game yet. It might be a problem. Mm -hmm. I do think for. Uh, in this case what i would say with it is that i don't think they finish all the rooms i think there's one they don't and they're kind of having to do a uh uh just these challenges as they keep coming up and it seems like they're going pretty quickly understanding what's happening but there's i think there are ways to make it more obvious what the like intended mechanic is and then have <laughs> the intended mechanic be more of the challenge oh, yeah, rather than just trying to uh, yeah, figure yeah. out what the intended mechanic is no, I, 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 like in this case they walk into this room and like oh i need to crap i need to make a potion i have all the ingredients here but i have to get past it by the other people um that's a that's a good idea it makes sense you have to use the other players you know be able to keep moving forward but having the start of the island be like find a way to the top good luck Instead mm -hmm. of just being like, go down here to start, yeah. I think could be easier that way. Because then you're just, you're removing the part where players feel like they're walking around looking dumb. Which yeah. is not a feeling that most people enjoy. enjoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so fucking dumb. Um, but as well, the games like these can be very difficult because you have to remake them every event. What like the challenges are. Otherwise, they are uh speed runnable essentially and it like mm -hmm. people who've played it before are able to just quickly run through it all yep the other thing i'm noticing that with this specific challenge is that the brewing process takes forever i forgot it takes that long in minecraft to make the awkward potion than the fire resist i also think he could have gone a little quicker if he had got the water bottle first before getting the ingredients because you you need the awkward potion first to do anything mm-hmm Okay. And then they get it and they bounce. Bounce on out of there. I also, never, uh, I might disagree with what I said about that island. It, it said find a way to the top, but immediately there's a way to go down and the players just ignored it. Like that's on them. Mm -hmm. I, I guess you can make it more obvious if there's nowhere else to go. But that's like that says how many people you need for each one. Yeah. Uh, I think you could also du duplicate those signs and have them be right in that middle square. Mm -hmm. So at spawn, you're able to look around quicker without having to run in a circle around all of them. What do they have to do? Hence, they're trying to find the chest with the wool in this one. And uh, you said there are hints around that will lead you from one to the next. So in the same way that you would like, I don't know, do an escape room. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's hints that lead to the next one weird. so i heard spongebob's okay. avid reader all right let's go to the library or go somewhere there's books uh it does not seem like theo is going toward uh or maybe their knowledge of spongebob is not that great to know where the library is supposed to be it's in the bedroom quick it's in the bedroom 
Okay, yellow. I think this one, oh, press books in a library, makes it a little more obvious if you, if you had seen that. But I think also putting like bookshelves there would have like helped uh -huh. to make it even more obvious. <laughs> Excuse me. Also, language. Purple. There's also a page okay, two of that yeah. book that he's not flipping towards. Sorry, that... Which is always the risk of books. People don't always see how many pages yep. there are in it. Yep. Oh, okay, there you got it. Uh, I, in the case, I, I would say you wouldn't want anything to be two pages like that. Like, there's no reason not to just put it all on one page. Mm -hmm. uh, because the flipping next page is gonna, it's not gonna happen. Somebody's gonna not notice. And then Theo finds it. And that's a case where I wonder if somebody could have found that without even seeing the hints. Although the hints were very quick, so. Mm -hmm. Likely not the most needed. Uh, well, I'll say as well for this game is it's 15 minutes, which as I said, the other game was 20 for like 20 ish for Mayhem, but some of the other games mm -hmm. have been much shorter, so it's just interesting to see different length and time for it. But I think this game does benefit from being longer because you want players to have the opportunity to complete them all and not feel like they missed out on finishing most of them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then this challenge is craft the ingredients and put them in the hoppers okay uh and on this island they're actually allowed to break things uh, apologies of background noise i think it would be beneficial if there was something denoting when you're what you are not or not allowed to break because for me i feel like oh i need those items some of them as wood or whatever it was i'd be like i'm just gonna break the house and then you go wait i can't break the house like what can i break then mm -hmm. definitely um, so something denoting what you can or cannot break, and then uh, go from there. As well, we're not going to see all the challenges because Theo does not go to all of them. It makes sense because it's a team game. Uh, but I think in this case, it's a we're getting a good point of view of what the game kind of looks like. You do a challenge together, you do one with a couple people, and then you do some of them on your own. How do you get sticks? Um, uh, but now we're stuck. Uh, not stuck. We're now we're in, in the uh, repetitive-ish thing of just collecting items to craft them. I also think one of the things they have to get is a cartography table, which is one of the funnier uh, crafting recipes if you don't know it. Mm -hmm. Not funny, I guess, but you, it's one. It's one of the rare ones, and if you don't know it, you're gonna not be enjoying yourself. And the two paintings, the flower pots from the play, but it needs four and a glass pane to smelt up some uh, sand. And then Thea realized, oh, I can place these in different, and they smelt faster, and then sent uh, the teammate away so they're able to finish finish crafting this easily while somebody else can move on which is a good strategy to do overall i think this is one of my favorite games that's in the event i'm very biased towards team-based uh challenge -y games because i think they i don't know, just highlight the best part of minecraft mechanics and they are just the they're the games where you don't even notice how much time is passing when you play them which i think always <laughs> like is a good game when that happens Okay, one room should find a lever. What were your overall thoughts on it, Gillen? Um, I do like these. Th this is one of those games where, like, I, I wish every event could have something like this. But the problem is, like, I'm just thinking about how much time it would be mm -hmm. to have to change this every event. Like, some of them, you can keep that. Like, that crafting game, you can effectively just kind of build a new area, change what you need to make. You can have the same area, but different stuff. Yeah, uh, and change some of the map. You could do that, but a lot of like the, the the you know the SpongeBob puzzle kind of thing, like you just have to make a whole new yeah puzzle for time. that one, um, and that just can be really annoying, especially if you're planning on making an event that is monthly or even every other month. Like you just like not only do you have to spend time like oh I kind of want to you know make a new make a new game, but also I all these old games that we have I have to keep updating. The puzzles for this game and it can be very annoying unlike a game where it's like well it exists we can add a feature to it if we want but it, yes. it's there you can just keep using it or the case where you just have to add a new map but the gameplay mechanics stay the same like iterating on this game requires um 
requires bringing in new ideas every time and new mechanics to it, mm -hmm. which can be, you know, right. hard to do. I like that um, checkpoint system in this room, even though I think uh, Theo did undid the checkpoint. Oh. Yeah. Then corrected itself. Okay. Uh, but then this part this is, is going to be a hard one. Is very it makes sense why there's a checkpoint system there. Right. <laughs> there's a checkpoint yeah. There. This is a... Thank you. No, but then gets it. Good job with that. But yeah, th these are the kind of games that are my favorite to both play and watch. Um, mm -hmm. just because they give a, such a unique experience. But it, you just said, it's so much work to... Oh, wow, they're on the wrong side of the ladder. It's pretty funny. Also, I love how those ladders look, but I also relate to the fact that it's hard to tell which side is the... I never can. My my advice for that is to put trapdoors on the back. <laughs> yep. Um, I think my, I don't really have any recommendations for this game. I think keep doing this as much as possible. I think these style of games are just so much fun. Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing I could slightly suggest is these islands seem really far apart from each other. Yeah. And, uh, the having to run so far to get to the next thing just feels annoying. Can feel annoying. They do finish with three minutes to go. The other two teammates finish whatever that challenge was, and they will make it back to the end. As they all jump off the side. Mm-hmm. Wait, no, like the best and then I believe this is the last game. Yes. Yep, we're at 55 minutes already. It is Icarus, um, which is a elytra flying game. Get to the finish of each little course. And these kind of, I also like these games. I like elytra movement in Minecraft. I think it's very fun because I don't think we use it enough for how cool it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and it should, in my opinion, be the next kind of dropper we have. The if, she was, it's just so much harder to make than dropper maps are. Yeah. Because well, because like if you look like terror, the kind of terror swoop force style stuff mm -hmm. like that is so much fun to do. Um, it oh it pe people lo love doing it. it. Watching it is very fun. The problem is that making those maps is hard, <laughs> mm -hmm. and to making them work well is really hard too. Like dropper is kind of like it's almost kind of meant to be kind of annoying. So when there's kind of an annoying dropper map, it's like kind of part of the thing, and you kind of just mm -hmm. you do it, you do, you do it, you do it, you do it over and over and over again. Um, but for you know these kinds of maps, you have to put a lot of thinking in how you're wanting people to go through them and making sure there aren't paths that are too easy and other mm -hmm. stuff like that. And as well, these are also like there are 20 stages for this game. These maps mm -hmm. are not quick to build if you think that you need like the fact you need 20 of them. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, it's faster to build than some of the other things, but when you build one, you need 19 more to have all new ones. So mm -hmm. I assume they reuse several of them between events. There's, there'd be no reason not to, but you're building this map that could take, you know, like a whole day of work, and the gameplay on it is like 15 seconds, mm -hmm. which is the other kind of thing that's uh, unfortunate about Elytra maps like this. That the ladder there is kind of funny. Just not that it feels out. It feels a little out of place because none of the other ones had something like that. But it just mm -hmm. was funny. Like, all right, you're flying. All right, now use a ladder. Oh, anyway, <gasps> Excuse me again. I like the use of arrows to make sure like the path is clear because you're having to do so many of these mm -hmm. that if you didn't know where to go, it just feel very frustrating. Uh, I do think at least that one could have been slightly more obvious where to go. And the other thing we're going to notice here is Theo's about to finish first. And he's, they're going to finish with like seven and a half minutes to go. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's the best way to lengthen the game so that, you know, there's more gameplay for the people who are the fastest. Because the issue is the fastest people very quickly get ahead of everyone. Somebody just finished stage 10 and Theo is on 18. Like mm -hmm. that's absurd. And then this one is the back and forth. And then take the staircase up to then fly again, which is also funny to me. Did, he, did they have a light to hop just from right there? I don't know how they did that. And then a one block size gaps. Yeah, that's like how this, this kind of elytra flying for some of these, it's almost like slow and methodical. It's not yeah. like speed flying. It's not that's always the thing. Like something like a Terra Swoop Force, like you're just trying to gain as much speed. But for these, it almost seems more like a little like parkour level mm -hmm. where it's not really about doing as fast. It's just like taking your time and kind of making sure you do it efficiently. Yep. And crushed it in first place. 
I think that game is really good as well. I think some or no, we still have race, but I think we only watch like a lap or so. Um, they do something different, different in this, I believe. I need to watch to make sure this is how it works before I lie again. Um, which if they don't do it this way, I recommend somebody to try this at some point. Which is they're gonna have multiple laps, but at each lap you stop, like you're forced to stop and then wait for everyone to then finish the lap as well. I can't tell him to do that or not. And then you're getting points for whoever finishes each lap fastest. Mm -hmm. So like you don't. So it's about lap speed. It's about it's each total. individual lap speed. <laughs> Excuse me again, which allows for then uh, the potential for somebody to make up after a bad first lap. It also means that like the way to get the most points is you need to like iterate and learn from whatever you messed up the first time and do it better the next time. Mm -hmm. And that you'll still have a chance to like be ahead of people rather than like you're forced, you're forced to be so far behind you can't catch up. But I will double check that's the case or maybe I'm lying because I apparently did that earlier for no reason i just was confused and then theo of course taking the harder pass because they he is pretty good at parkour but i do think they finish race in first or it's close to first i might skip i can't remember if i skip with the end of the full game or end of one of the laps just because we we're here more so to watch the gameplay rather than you know who wins all these things mm-hmm and I'll, also, we're taking a moment to appreciate the map. Uh, I'm going to make sure we drop, you know, all the links and the script and the pinned comment for where to follow the event. But there's also, uh, they're currently looking for testers. And so if you, you know, watch this podcast, you probably know a little something about game design and events and things potentially now from us. And so if you want to join them as a tester, I'll also leave that linked in the pinned comment. Uh, but remember, there, there, it's always up to them to decide what they do or do not change. And that's entirely okay. There's different reasons. There's reasons to change things, and there's reasons to not change things that sometimes feel like they should be changed. But yeah, see, first lap is finished. Theo is now waiting as everyone else finished the lap, and then they're gonna redo it. They're gonna do another round of it. Um, or maybe is it a different map? Maybe I. Maybe I was blind about what happened. We'll find out in just a moment. We'll say if there are three maps, oh, that's a long, <laughs> that's a big map. That's a, a lot trailer. of builds to do. I think <laughs> it is like, I'm pretty sure it's the same map. Pretty sure. The only reason I, I get forgetful is because I edit these down kind of quickly and then I skip mm -hmm. ahead. Yeah, this is the same map. I recognize this section. I edit these pretty quickly together because I don't want to, you know, watch it all, have all my thoughts about it, and then not have stuff to talk about when we get here. Mm -hmm. But I like this iteration on it because then it allows, as I said, you each map is about learning the best route for you and kind of proving on your mistakes without having to feel pressured because it may so far ahead of you. Absolutely um, but that was the event. We're gonna hit the final stuff here, which is seeing you know what placements everyone came in. But Gillen, what are your overall thoughts for it? Um, I really like the event. It's one of those where are they like a maze runner type thing. Um, mm -hmm. it's one of those where I think I remember. I think it was like Saber talking about it a long time ago, where it's like the builds aren't like amazing because it's like it's not like it's a big build team that's making these super you know it's not like something like mcc or even some of the other ones we've seen where there's the builds but i do really like the games and the, a lot of the games are very creative um and that's one thing that we of course we really appreciate is when people make really creative games and push the boundaries and think about doing things in a different way yes um so i i did really like that i really enjoyed watching this one i think the games of the events we have watched. I'm not going to make comparisons, but this is one of the ones where I felt bad cutting out gameplay because there's just so much to see and so much to talk about and then highlight what's going well. And so like the things we said, you know, could be improved on are things that obviously are just small things. And it's polished in the same way like other events we've also said need polished, but it's very different things that need polished and tuned up. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think it went really well. It ran very smoothly. It looked very fun to play. And I'm excited to see where Chillers goes in the future, especially if they're now getting testers and if they didn't have that before to help test the event uh, more. 
uh, regularly mm-hmm. to then be able to iterate and improve on it more often. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. but we'll wrap up here. Gillen, I have a plan for next week. We're going to watch an event, but it's one that's already happened long ago. What? We're watching an event that happened long ago, Gillen. Okay. Minecraft Monday. Oh, no. We're going all the way back for next week to mm-hmm. talk about it because I'm really curious what we're going to say of like why that did so well based on where the modern scene is now at. Yeah, because I have a feeling that we're going to watch it and we're either going to be like, oh, actually, a lot of these games are pretty good. Or we're going to be like, wow, this is way worse than I thought it was at the mm-hmm. time. <laughs> Uh, and I think the latter is more likely. So that'll be pretty interesting. I'm guessing that's what we're going to say. Uh, but stay tuned for that next week. Uh, shout out to obviously everybody who works on chillers. I'll make sure all those links are in the pinned comment. And we'll see you all next time.